In this video, we'll discuss antimicrobial resistance. Let's begin with a little bit of history. Up until 1945, and even in 1945, every child born had a life expectancy of just 30 years. But just in 10 years, by 1955, this increased to 50 years. What is it that happened during these 10 years that increased life expectancy so much? Let's explore. Up until 1945, if someone had a stomach infection or an eye infection or say a blister on their finger or a scrape on their knee, there was a high chance that they would lose their life to this infection because their immune system would not be able to fight against the infection. But in 1945, antibiotics began to be mass-produced, and that changed the course of medical history. Let's see how this wonderful drug antibiotics work. Let's say this is the human body, and let's say some kind of infection, let's say a bacteria, has entered the human body. What the bacteria would do is the moment it enters, it would start multiplying. And this would make the human body, the person, feel ill. Now, if their immune system was able to destroy this bacteria, they would be fine again. But if their immune system was not strong enough to fight the bacteria, they would need an antibiotic. Now, when an antibiotic is administered, the chemicals in the antibiotic go and begin to attack the cell wall of the bacteria here. And that causes the bacteria to die. Now, once the bacteria is dead, the human body is cleared of the infection and the person can live normally again. This story sounds amazing, but there's one problem. And the problem is because of something called mutations. What exactly are mutations? Let me explain. Changes in an organism, mostly random changes in an organism, or in an organism are called mutations. For example, this organism here may develop some changes like these. Most of the mutations are just random changes, but there's something interesting about mutations. Mutations can get carried over from generation to generation. So if this uh, particular organism reproduces, its offspring would carry on those same characteristics. And that's because mutations are recorded in the DNA and passed on to future generations. Cool, isn't it? So you could have a lot of different mutations, maybe something like this, or something like this, uh, or maybe something like this, right? But every now and then, some rare changes give the organism some kind of survival advantage. Now this may seem vague, let me explain. Let's go back to the old story, where the infected human body is being administered an antibiotic. The antibiotic chemicals go ahead to attack the cell wall of the bacteria, and the bacteria die. But this time something different happened. One bacteria is still left over here, right? So the remaining antibiotic go ahead to attack that bacteria, but something different happens this time. The antibiotic tries to attack the bacteria, but it fails. Now this happened because the cell wall in this bacteria mutated or changed in a way that it could now fight the antibiotic and it could win against it. And so the mutations in this case have caused antibiotic resistance or antimicrobial resistance. Think about it. This bacteria was able to develop a stronger defense mechanism due to mutations. And now it can fight the antibiotic and continue to live on. And that's scary because now when this bacteria reproduces, all of its offspring carry that same power to fight against the antibiotic. So even if we give a double dosage of antibiotic, this bacteria would win against it because of the antibiotic resistance or antimicrobial resistance that it has developed. Okay, so what is the solution? Initially, what we started to do is to make new antibiotics. So we made a new antibiotic that lasted for five years, and then the bug learned to defeat this one. So we made another new one, and this one worked well. So then we said, okay, so let's just make new drugs, new antibiotics, whenever the need arises. But the problem is this drug also failed in lesser time. So we made another one, and this antibiotic also failed in even shorter time. And we realized that this policy of making new antibiotics is just a temporary fix. 
The problem actually was that antibiotics were being used unnecessarily around the world. If we could just fix this one thing and if we stopped using antibiotics unnecessarily, antibiotic resistance would slow down. What do I mean by that? Maybe if it now, uh, you know, takes five years for the bug to learn to beat the antibiotic, if we stopped using antibiotics unnecessarily, it may take 15 years for the bug to learn to beat this antibiotic. So uh, you may ask, well, in what ways are we using antibiotics unnecessarily? Let's go through that. So one of the biggest ways in which antibiotics are used unnecessarily is self-medication -medic of antibiotics. Another way in which people use antibiotics badly is incomplete antibiotic courses. Let's say you go to the doctor and the doctor prescribes five days of a particular antibiotic. You take the antibiotic for two days and you feel much better. So what you decide to do is to stop taking the antibiotic after two days. And that is wrong. If you're prescribed a full five days, go take the entire course of the antibiotic. Overdosage of antibiotic is another issue that is also to be avoided. This also can accelerate the rate at which antibiotic resistance is being developed. The other large concern is antibiotics are used as preventive med medicines in poultry farming. Let me show you why. When in a poultry farm, hens are given water and feed mixed with antibiotics, slowly the bugs in them start getting resistant to these antibiotics and then those antibiotics don't work for humans either. Poultry farming is a huge concern worldwide. Dairy farming and other forms of farming are also concerns, but poultry farming is a huge concern for antibiotic resistance. That's it for this video. I hope you learned about antibiotic resistance and you will be careful about using antibiotics.